It's Sunday, and I'm Frankie D. And in every Italian home, this is how we start our Sundays, making the sauce. Got this baby going at 7.30 this morning. But today, we're gonna talk about the dessert we're gonna have today. One of the most amazing Italian desserts you ever eat. And if you've ever eaten it before, you know there's just nothing like it. We're gonna make tiramisu, but we're gonna make it totally from scratch. Now, one of the key ingredients of tiramisu is mascarpone. Mascarpone is the cheese. It's, a, it's, a, it's an Italian cheese that you make that goes into the, the, uh, the tiramisu. And most people will buy it, it's very expensive. We're gonna do this totally from scratch. We're gonna make the mascarpone, we're gonna make the tiramisu, we're gonna put it all together, it's gonna be amazing. Tiramisu means in Italian, bring me up. Tiramisu, we want to bring me up. Because uh, that's what it's going to do after the, you have your dinner and you, you have a little bit of vino, you're sitting around the table after dinner, you know, you get a little sleepy. So it's going to bring you up. Now, a lot of people will put uh, rum in it, um, or maybe whatever your favorite uh, liqueur you, you want to put in it. Uh, we're not going to do that today. We got kids at the table, we're not going to do that. But we're going to put definitely use the espresso coffee in it. So but we're going to tiramisu, we're going to bring you up. Before you start preparing, one of the first steps you want to do is you want to get your espresso coffee made and get that done first before you start preparing your mascarpone and getting over everything together. This is important because if you don't do this and give time for the espresso coffee to cool down, um, when you dip the lady fingers in it to make the tiramisu, the lady fingers are going to end up mushada. Moshada. They're going to end it up soft and they're going to fall apart in your hand before you can get them into the tray for the tiramisu. So one of the very important things is you want to make sure that that cools down, that coffee cools down. Even if you can get it and stick it in the refrigerator in the cups afterwards um, to get it cooler, that's going to make a huge difference in how you work because you got to work kind of fast with those lady fingers. One of the things you're going to need to make your tiramisu, this is a, a must. You're going to need an espresso coffee maker. Uh, you can pick up, this is a, a cheap one of Mr. Coffee. I picked this up in Walmart. It's only about 20 bucks. Something like this will do the job. Uh, also what's nice about this one is if you, you can make yourself some cappuccino with it too. So that's a nice little added feature. But this is a must because you got to get that good strong coffee in there for your uh, tiramisu. Now make sure that you uh, get enough coffee in here for, to make your batch of tiramisu. Uh, we're making a big batch today where I'm making some to, to give away to people. You know, we're Italian. We got to make some for people to take home. Got to do that. So uh, make sure you have enough coffee because the lady fingers are going to soak up a lot of that uh, espresso coffee. So I got the Folgers. We're going to put a little bit of this in here. We're going to fill this up, get that uh, tiramisu uh, that espresso nice and strong. Uh, this way when, uh, when you have it, we're going to tiramisu, we're going to bring you up. So we're going to take this, we're going to put this in our coffee maker, in our espresso maker. One of the things you want to make sure you do before you prepare your milk uh, to make your mascarpone is you want to prep the pot. Uh, this is a very important step because uh, it prevents the scorching of the milk as we're heating it up to the right temperature to make our mascarpone. So we're going to take a little bit of ice. Uh, you probably want just want to get like three or four cubes. We're going to put it in the pot. And you're going to swish this around the pot. Uh, and what this does, it, prevent, it creates a steam barrier. So that as we heat up the milk, it will heat slowly and we won't scorch our milk and ruin our mascarpone. It's very important that you get good quality milk to make your mascarpone. Uh, what you want to make sure is when you get your milk that you read the label. Uh, you don't want ultra pasteurized milk. Ultra pasteurized milk will not make good mascarpone. 
So uh, read the label. Sometimes it's very, very hard to find on the label. You just want pasteurized milk, not the ultra pasteurized. They heat it up to a higher temperature, and for some reason it just doesn't make good, good mascarpone. It doesn't make any good cheese. So make, look at the label. Uh, this is T.G. Lee. We got it in Publix here in Florida. Uh, I've used this, and it works out great, making some great mascarpone. Uh, these are the chemicals you're going to use to make the mascarpone. Now, a lot of the old timers uh, will do it with using lemon juice. Um, I don't like to do it using lemon juice because sometimes you get a lemony flavor into the, the mascarpone a little bit. Uh, it works very well to do it that way. But uh, these are actually the chemicals used to make uh, the mascarpone. You could buy these online. Um, there's some great places that you can, you can purchase this. It, uh, the, they have kits to make mascarpone. It works out great. Uh, the chemicals that you're going to use is tartaric acid. And uh, you can use that. Uh, this, this is actually the tartaric acid. And then also calcium chloride. And you're just going to put a little bit in that in to the milk to make the, uh, the mascarpone. It's, um, these are very inexpensive uh, and it goes a long, long way. You could buy these kits, they're like 15, 20 bucks, somewhere around there on, online. Uh, and uh, you'll have plenty to make batch after batch. So uh, I highly recommend you do it that way. Okay, we're ready now to prepare our tartaric acid mi mixture. Now remember, I'm making a, a very big batch, um, probably about two pounds of mascarpone. So you can make less than this. You just have to, uh, you know, half it, quarter it, depending upon how much you want to make and how much tiramisu you want to make. So what we're doing now is we're taking, uh, we're making a gallon of milk. This is going in a gallon of milk. So we're taking our tartaric acid. We're putting one teaspoon of tartaric acid. And we're going to get that from the bag. I'm going to put this in a bowl, and then we're going to put one cup of water, and we're going to mix this together in a bowl. And we're mixing it up. Okay, and we're going to set that aside for as we heat up the milk. Okay, and now, now we're going to mix our uh, calcium chloride mixture. So we've got our cup of water over here. We're going to put one half of a teaspoon, and we put that in there. Mix it with a cup of water. And stir it around. Okay, and that's ready to go. Now, very, very important. I've done this. Don't make this mistake. Make sure you know which bowl has got your tartaric acid and which one has the calcium chloride. Because if you mix them up, you ruin your mascarpone. So make sure you either label which one you have, which bowl, do different bowls, but make sure you get your chemicals right and you get them in there at the right time. That's very, very important. This is your savior right here to get this thing done right. This is your dairy thermometer. Uh, temperature is very, very critical when you're making this. So you want to get your dairy thermometer. You want to put it in your pot get that going um, and make sure you turn it so you can see it and read your temperature correctly as you're making your mascarpone. Okay. So we're going to pour this in our pot. And now we're going to pour our calcium chloride mixture into the milk. Remember, calcium chloride, not the tartaric acid. You're putting your calcium chloride mixture in here. And you're going to pour that in. Okay. 
and we're going to put this on uh, medium to high heat right around there and you're going to stir and you're going to stir and you're going to stir you want to keep this milk moving very very important you keep the milk moving because you want to make sure the temperature is even like I said it's all about the temperature get that moving and keep it moving um, I gotta tell you this is gonna be the most boring part <laughs> of the whole process because it takes a little while to get that up to the right temperature so we're going to just keep this moving keep it going as you're stirring another very critical thing remember we put the ice in there made that little steam barrier on the bottom of the pot um, as you're stirring you want to make sure that with your spoon that you're stirring that you do not touch the bottom of the pot because um, if you do it'll break that steam barrier so kind of just go like through the top of it, go back and forth. We want to keep this temperature even as it rises and keep that milk moving. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Now our temperature is getting up around 150. We're going to raise it up to 185. And like I say, temperature is very critical here. So we want to make sure that when we get to 185, we're going to put our tartaric acid in here. Now um, we're just about... 150 right in around there uh, you're going to notice that the milk will start to froth a little bit this is very normal don't worry about it it's fine um, so just keep stirring just keep stirring it as this goes like I said this is the most boring part of the job so just keep stirring it make sure that that temperature stays nice and even all right our temperature is getting to 180 degrees now and it's always good if you have an assistant at this part of the game. So I got my wonderful daughter Madeline here, and she's going to help me out to pour the tartaric acid mi mixture into the, the milk here. So we're about 180 degrees and rising. So in just a minute, we're going to dump this when the temperature hits exactly 185. And then bada boom, it's going in there. second here we're going to be there at the 185 and go and in goes the tartaric acid dump it dump it dump it dump it and watch this watch what happens here and we want to make sure we adjust the heat so it doesn't go any higher than that it's like little miss muffet sat on a tuffet and made the curds and whey and that's exactly what we're getting here folks this is curds and whey you're going to see this separate and look at that look at that those curds that's your mascarpone and the yellow stuff left behind that's the whey we're going to drain that off okay and this is our mascarpone that's making right now this is it and look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. And pretty soon we're going to strain this off in a cheesecloth. And look at that. How beautiful that's coming out, huh? Okay. And we're going to move this off of the burner just so it doesn't burn up on us. And we're going to let it set for probably about 15-20 minutes. Let the curds set. Let the curds and the whey separate. And that, folks, will be that's going to be our mascarpone. Okay, now we're ready to uh, drain off our curds and have our mascarpone. So we're going to need a school of bats. Everybody say school of bats. This is a strainer. We're going to take this, and what I always do is I put it inside of a pot like this. I mean, you could do it in the sink, but it's just, to me, it's not as, as sanitary to do it this way. So what I do is I put the small box inside of the, of the pot. Then you take your butter muslin cheesecloth, and you're going to put this and line it over your school box. 
and push this all in nice and nice. And just be very careful when you do this that you don't burn yourself. And we're going to pour this in. And it's going to go right through the cheesecloth. Look at that. Look at that mascarpone. Beautiful, nice, white, creamy, beautiful. So you're going to let that drain about a good hour. Make sure all the whey comes off. And then we're ready to make the tiramisu. Have this all set. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. Nice, pearly white. Oh, gosh, isn't that amazing? Look at that. And again, we want to try to drain this off, this excess whey that we got here. Um, I mean, you can leave it in, you know, if you want to have a creamier cheese. Um, I like kind of the firmer texture, but um, you can drain the rest of that off. Uh, what I tend to do here at, uh, at the end here, and, and, and this is entirely up to you, uh, some people will put this in a blender. Um, some will, you know, just do what I'm doing here. Some will do it with a whisk. But I break the curds up, and uh, I do this for about probably 10, 15 minutes, uh, just to get a little bit of a smoother texture. And this is what we have left over, folks, from our curd. There's our curds, and there's our whey. And this is what's left over. So this just gets discarded. We're going to dump that out, and we have our mascarpone. Okay, we're ready to start putting this all together now. We've got our mascarpone over here, and we're gonna get two dozen large eggs. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna separate the two dozen eggs. We want just the yolks, we don't want the, the white part of the eggs. So we're gonna discard, we're gonna throw away the white part of the eggs. I know if my grandma was here today, she'd probably kill me for throwing away. The, the, uh, the whites, sorry, Grandma, but uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to separate, uh, put 24 uh, yolks in here, and then we're going to move on. Okay, so we're ready now to start putting together the custard and, and getting it all together. Um, for our tiramisu. So we have our two dozen eggs. We have them here in the pot. We have two cups of milk. We're going to pour that in here. And we have two and a quarter cups of sugar. We're going to pour that in. And then we're going to put this on medium heat. Now you notice I still have the thermometer in here. Um, the reason why I like to do that is because I just like to keep the temperature. We want to get this to where it begins to boil, but yet we don't want to, uh, to get it to where we burn it. So I'm taking the whisk and I'm stirring this all around and getting this all mixed up nice. And What's going to happen when it begins to boil, it's going to begin to solidify and it's going to make a, uh, a nice custard uh, for us. And uh, then uh, what we'll do, we got our mascarpone sitting over on the counter. And what we'll do uh, after we're done is we'll put the mascarpone in. And then we begin to put it all together. And that's about where we're at right now. So we're going to shut this off. We're going to stir it. And you can see now it's beginning to thicken. So this is right where we want to be. I'm going to remove that from the heat. And we got it. Yeah, that's, that's just where we want it to be. So what we're going to do now... We're going to just stir this, make sure it's all mixed real well. Yeah, that's right the consistency we want, right about there. 
And now we're going to take this and we're going to put it in the freezer here for about, uh, and leave it in there for a good 20 minutes or so, just so it cools down enough so that we can add our mascarpone into it. Okay, while we're waiting for that to cool in the refrigerator or in the freezer, um, and I put it in the freezer, you can put it in the refrigerator, I just put it in there so it can cool quicker. I don't want to get this done. You know, you can put it in the refrigerator and leave it for an hour or so uh, or, or longer. You know, you're going to need it for it to cool down. But um, we're going to make the whipped cream and we're going to get that ready uh, so that when the, uh, our toasted mixture comes out, um, we're ready to go. So we got a quart of the heavy whipping cream. We're going to take that and we're going to Pour that in the bowl. And then we're going to put, oh, I'm going to say probably about a teaspoon, maybe a little more, I don't measure it, I just kind of splash it in there, of uh, vanilla. And then we're going to whip it all up. We want to keep whipping this cream up until uh, we see like little stiff peaks on the top of it. And that's when our whipped cream will be ready. Starting to get whipped cream here. I recruited a, uh, a daughter here. <laughs> this is Emily. Hi. <laughs> to finish the job. And uh, you can see on the cream that it's starting to get the little stiff peaks on the top. So we're, we're getting whipped cream here, finally. And uh, we'll be done in a minute. Please stop it. Looks good. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes. We're going to take our custard here out of the freezer. And it looks good. Just about the right temperature. So, you can see here we have a really nice, you see here we got a really nice custard going here. And now we're going to mix in our mascarpone. I'm going to put that right in there. And we're going to break it up and we're going to stir this right into. You gotta mix this really good, folks. You gotta get that stirred in really, really well. Okay, so we have our whipped cream. We have our mascarpone mixture all ready to go. We have our lady fingers. And we're gonna get ready to put it together. Oh, and we have our espresso coffee. The espresso coffee is cooled down, ready to go. We have Emily here ready to put it all together with us. Yep. So, we're going to take our lady fingers and you want to do this quickly. You don't want to, um, normal, the tendency is that you would want to put this in the coffee and soak it. No, you don't want to do that. You want to dip it in quickly because it's going to soak that coffee up. You dip it in the other side and you put it in. So then you get the next one. You dip it in the coffee. You dip it in the other side. And you put it in. And you're going to layer that all the way across. You're going to layer the whole dish like that. And then Emily's going to help me here with this. So we can get it done quicker. have Emily pick that up so I can scoop that out into the pan and we're going to scoop this out 
Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Okay, and we're gonna spread this out and we wanna put it not too thick, we wanna put it thin on there. Because uh, this stuff is, it a little bit goes a long way. So we just wanna get enough to cover it. And maybe a little bit more. Okay. And we want to make this even all the way through, real nice and nice. And same thing on this. You want just enough to cover it. Whoop, that's plenty. And we spilled a little on the table, but we're doing good. And get that off the edge. Okay. And we just spread this around. And like I say, you don't want to get it, you don't need to get it too thick. I mean, some people like to do it that way. I just like to um, get it just enough to cover each layer, just so you have a layer of each on there. Okay, now we're going to go on to the next layer. Um, and we're going to repeat the process again. We're going to do the lady fingers um, in the uh, espresso coffee. We're going to do the another layer of the mascarpone mixture, and then we're going to do uh, the whipped cream. And we're going to repeat the process. Now we're coming to our final finishing stages of our tiramisu. And uh, Emily, uh, this is a, a semi-sweet baker's chocolate. And we are grating that up right on top of our beautiful tiramisu that we got. And uh, you just want to cover this up nicely. Uh, you can put as much as you want, as little as you want. But uh, all those flavors come together, folks. All those flavors come together and they make for a really beautiful fla flavor of tiramisu. That's the thing that's so neat about it. You know, each thing that's in there has got its own individual flavor, and then they're layered and they all just come together real nice. And now we're going to eat the finished product, and Rosie is going to serve it. Get this out. Oh, geez. He did that. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Now, it doesn't look as beautiful as it could. All right. That's yours. And yeah, we're eating on paper plates. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for watching my uh, video of how to make tiramisu. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, and a lot of you may have noticed during my video, but my shirt here. Uh, my wife, Teresa, my love of my life, my precious sweetheart of 30 years, uh, was diagnosed with ALS in December of 2014. And, uh, she is in the later stages of the disease right now. Uh, you might also notice the number four. The number four was the number that Lou Gehrig, the baseball player, after who ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, was named. Uh, it's a horrible disease. Uh, a lot of people don't know about it. Uh, I did not know a whole lot about it other than the ice bucket challenge. And, you know, you talk to people about it and they say, what is ALS? You know, and tell them my wife has ALS, and then you say Lou Gehrig's disease, and sometimes they know, and then you say the ice bucket challenge. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Uh, that was used to help raise money for this uh, fight of this disease. It's a disease with no cure. It's a disease with virtually no medications, and we need help uh, getting this disease, get, finding a cure for it. So um, there's two wonderful organizations that I'd like to tell you about. Uh, one would be the James Santella Foundation. It's a wonderful organization to help people and support people that are fighting this fight like I am for ALS. Uh, and also a wonderful organization for children. 
uh, which uh, Emily that you saw in the video will be going on a camp for. Uh, the organization is called Hope Loves Company. Uh, they have camps around the country and also around the world for children that are caregivers and it's an amazingly hard thing for children to go through this kind of thing and uh, take care of uh, their parents or take care of loved ones that are going through this horrible disease. So I would encourage you to check out the sites uh, www.hopes loves company and also the James Santoa Foundation you can google that and uh, they're both wonderful organizations thank you very much